All right, folks, welcome to 90.9, .9, the quadratic for your honors algebra 2 final exam review guide video. Today we have sponsors in the house. We got Tazo Zen T. We got Cliff Bar, the great St. Louis Cardinals, brought to you by Lou Brock. St. Louis University is a proud sponsor, and Starbucks. We thank them kindly. All right, guys, here are the answers to your first page. Guys, number one, just multiply. Uh, the the uh, seven and eights together. Remember, when you multiply uh, with the same base, you add the exponents. If you get a negative exponent, it goes in the denominator. Guys, on number two, you want to make sure to do like 32 divided by eight first. Then ask yourself, what has more y's? What has more x's? What has more z's, top or bottom? Then cube everything. Square here first, then uh, raise everything to the fourth power, then put it all together. All right, here's number four. Four shouldn't be that bad. Just use some distribution right there. Same thing with five. All right, a two by three gives you six total arrows that you will combine. You're going to take away two x's and two y's and divide everything by six to get your answer for six. Synthetic division for number seven, folks. Set this equal to zero. Put it in the cubby. Bring down the five. Do that number in the cubby times five, then add them together. Three times 10, then add them together. That's the remainder, so it's plus 130 over what you divided by. Guys, number eight, state the degree and the leading coefficient. The degree is the highest power, and the leading coefficient, what is attached to x to the fifth, is a negative five. Opposite signs mean you have an odd degree function. Number of real zeros is how many times it crosses the x-axis. One, two, three times. That is your first page. Again, this final exam, probably close to 60 questions. We'll not have as many as are on here. Here's how you factor, folks. When you have uh, the sum of cubics, you take the cubed root of x to the third and 27. That's x plus three. Then you take this first term and you square it. If that's a plus, this is going to be a minus. It's always opposite sign of the inner product. Three times x and then you square the second term, 9. All right, do the same thing on 11. Take the cube root of 8x to the third and 125. That's going to be 2x minus the cube root of 125 is 5. I'm going to take 2x and square it. Uh, that's a negative, so that's going to be a positive. Take the inner product of 2x and 5. That's how we get 10x. And then square negative 5 or positive 5, doesn't matter, you get 25. All right, this is just kind of normal factoring. Multiplies to 72 because it's a negative. Uh, it differs by 1, 9, and 8. The middle term is negative, so that's a negative. x squared, because you got to get x to the fourth. It's got to be x squared times x squared. x squared minus 9, x squared plus 8. But x squared minus 9 is a difference of two perfect squares. That's why we write it like this. Take out the x they have in common, then you ask yourself what multiplies to 18 because it's negative. It differs by 3, positive 6, minus 3. And that x is on the outside. Write a polynomial function of least degree with zeros of negative 3, 8, and 0. I'm going to put the 0 out front. x equals 0, x equals negative 3, x equals 8. That means it's just x. x plus 3 in a parenthesis if you set it equal to 0, and x minus 8. Distribute, and then first outer inner, for, uh, last it, foil it. If x equals negative 7, x equals negative 3, x also equals pos or negative 3i, x also equals positive 3i because of conjugates. So simply do x times x, negative 3 times 3, x squared would have to equal negative 9 if you got an answer of negative 3i and positive 3i. Then move that over, it'd be x squared plus 9 in a parenthesis, x plus 7, and just foil it. Guys, I uh, made 18 a little bit too harder, and first, uh, a little bit too hard, <laughs> great English there. Um, also, I wanted a 14 here, so that's one to change. Guys, uh, on 16, take out the x that they all have in common, and just factor, use the cover up method, x equals, x equals zero, x equals negative eight, and x equals four. We'll multiply 6 to 3 because it's negative. It differs by 2. x squared plus 9. x squared minus 7. Set this equal to 0. Set that equal to 0. x squared equals negative 9. You get plus or minus 3i. x squared equals 7. You get plus or minus root 7. So again, I want us to change number 18 to this right here, that 28. Make it a 14. Factor by grouping. These two have an x squared in common, leaving you with 2x plus 7. These two have a 2 in common, leaving you with 2x plus 7. Set 2x plus 7 equal to 0, you get negative 3.5. If you set x squared plus 2 equal to 0, you're going to get x squared equals a negative 2. 
and that gives you plus or minus i root 2. That one should be a little bit easier on your test, on your final. That was a little challenging. All right, folks, just through the operations, guys. If f squared is 7, or f of x is 7x squared minus 11x, and you're subtracting g of x, which is this, negative 3x plus 8, just subtract to make sure the negative goes through to both terms right there. Just multiply the two functions together. There you go. And do 3 times f of x minus 2 times g of x. That negative 2 goes through to that and that. And there is your answer. Identify the domain and range. So, folks, the smallest number you can have inside a square root is 0. So if you set 2x minus 6 equal to 0, you get x equals 3. You want that to be 0 or bigger. So if you have values of 3 or bigger, that will give you an okay answer. So that's why the domain is greater than or equal to 3. As you put higher values of x in, this whole number gets bigger. So that's why negative 4, that always has to do something with the range. That's why negative 4 is the smallest value you'll get. That's why it's y is greater than or equal to negative 4. On 23, again, you set what is inside the square root equal to 0. You get x is 7. But you don't want that square root to be negative. So... You need values of x that are 7 or less, 7 or less. As you plug in values of x that you're allowed, 7, 6, 5, 4, this gets bigger. And when you add 5 to it, it continues to get bigger. So the range is still greater than or equal to 5. What would make the range less than or equal to is if you had a negative sign on the outside. All right, guys, we're just, the, uh, we're just composing functions. So you do g of 3 first. You get uh, positive 5. Then you plug 5 into the outer function f, and you get 32. There's the answer for 25. Pretty self-explanatory there. Number 26, plug negative 1 in for x, again, to the x squared plus 7, and then plug it back in 8. Number 7, guys, f of x uh, is just a function, so it's going to be g of x squared plus 7. So where you see x in the g equation, that's where you're plugging in that entire equation. So anytime you have like g of f of x or f of g of x, you're going to have an answer that involves x. All right, not just a single number. So let's take a look here at 28. Find the inverse. First off, f x is the same thing as y. So on all these, just write y equals. Then you have a y swap. You interchange x and y. You try to solve for y. All right, here's your answer for 28. 29, folks, interchange x and y. Subtract 7 from both sides. Square both sides. Then you're going to add 1 and then divide by 3. On 30, interchange x and y, multiply both sides by 2, add 4, and then divide by 3. 31 and 32 can break down cleanly. Remember, there's an imaginary 2 when you take the square root. Square root of 64 is 8. 2 goes into 6 3 times. 2 goes into 10 5 times. The cube root of 64 is 4. 3 goes into 12 4 times. 3 goes into 27 9 times. Does not go in clean or out, come out cleanly for 33 and 34. You take the square, square root of 50, you got a 5 that breaks out of jail. A 2 stays on the inside. 2 goes into 7 3 times for the x with 1 left over. 2 goes into the 11 for the y 5 times with 1 left over. Take the 4th root of 81, you get 3. 4 goes into 17 4 times with 1 left over. Don't forget about the 4 there for the 4th root. 4 goes into 13 3 times with 1 left over. And I would just multiply 5 and 3 on the outside and multiply within, and then it breaks down nicely here. This breaks down to this on 35. 36, just first outer inner last. And folks, two, 3 times 2 gives you 6, and you can multiply within the root. 2 times 5 is 10. Root 10 doesn't break down. You have conjugates on 37, so all you have to do is the first and the last. 7 times 7 is 49. Root 3 times root 3, when you square square root, the number just pops on out, drops down. All right. 38, folks, if you want to get rid of a root or an i in the denominator, multiply by the conjugate. So multiply top and bottom by root 7 plus 2. Then you just have to do the first and the last part of FOIL, which is, I should have shown more work here, which is 7 minus 4. And that's how you get 3. And up top, you just multiply. I get the same denominator here. If I'm multiplying with the same expo or same base, I want to add the exponents. So 2 thirds plus 3 fourths is 17 over 12. And then when you raise it to the third power, you just do 3 times 17, 51 over 12. 
Get the same denominator, it's gonna be 30 here. 25 thirtieths is five six. Negative two over five is negative 12 over 30. And you subtract when you divide. Subtract the exponent. Square both sides, get rid of the square roots, and you get your answer. Add three to both sides, then square both sides, get your answer. Square both sides right away. Don't forget about the square of the two on the outside. All right, so then add three, then divide by five, and square both sides to get your answer. And folks, we are moving on. Take a look here. Number 45, 46, write it in exponential form. Four is the base, three is the answer, or four is the base, three is the exponent, 64 is the answer. Two is the base, negative five is the exponent, one over 32 is the answer. Going backwards, log base five of the answer, 625, equals the exponent four. Log base 49 of the answer, seven, equals the exponent one half. If your base is bigger than one, it's growth, all right? So whatever that's left off from one, that point two or o oh, two seven just move the decimal over twice 2.7 percent growth if it's less than one it's decay so do one minus this move the decimal over twice it's 7.3 percent decay all right you can do one of two things you can use change of base formula which is this or you can say four to what power gives you 32 again when to be base two you get two and a half two to the fourth is x x is 16 x to the negative second is 16. It's a little bit more challenging. If four to the second is 16 and I want a negative power, I just use the reciprocal. One fourth to the negative second is 16. So that's how x is equal to. Here you have 25 to the